Growing up in the Chicago area, I was lucky to be close to a wide variety of trust bridges, as well as walkable neighborhoods, architecturally stunning buildings, major cultural institutions, decent public transportation, etc. But specifically for this video, trust bridges. My frequent encounters with trust bridges while commuting to Chicago or even visiting local relatives led me to garner a deep, lifelong appreciation for these structures. I love how the beam members of a bridge crisscross and interlock in such a complex architectural fashion. In a way, they remind me of the Eiffel Tower, steel latticework transformed into something elegant. There is truly an art to designing and constructing a truss bridge, and this overlooked yet beautiful art style is what makes truss bridges a defining feature of many local communities, turning them into a symbol of local pride. My passion has grown over the years. I have multiple books relating to truss bridges. I go out of my way to photograph truss bridges across the country, particularly in the Midwest and Northeast. For a while, my favorite pastime was to scroll through the website bridgehunter.com for hours before the creator sadly passed away and the site became a shell of its former self. Unfortunately, the presence of truss bridges is disappearing, as state and local transportation departments are demolishing them at a horrifically rapid rate. When these bridges are demolished, DOTs almost never replace them with more beautiful trusses, instead opting to build soulless, ugly blocks of concrete and steel. So, in this video, I will be discussing the reasons for this drastic decline of truss bridges, the impact it would have on local communities and the country as a whole, and what can be done to preserve these historic pieces of infrastructure, or at least start building them again. Hello, I'm the Southland Urbanist. I make videos which promote urban planning and practices that benefit society. If you like the video and want to support my channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks! To show the alarming rate that truss bridges are being demolished, I would like to give a case study about the Illinois River Valley, one of my favorite regions in Illinois outside of Chicago. During my first visit to Starved Rock State Park many years back, one of the things that stood out to me was the cantilevered through truss carrying Illinois Route 178 over the Illinois River near Utica. In my opinion, it beautifully meshed in with the scenery of the region, and I soon came to associate cantilevered trusses like this one with inland river communities of the United States. I therefore started searching for similar truss bridges along the Illinois River, only to learn that the vast majority of them are gone. The following towns along the Illinois River have lost historic truss bridges within the past 30 years. Marseille, demolished in the late 1990s. Hennepin, demolished in 2000. Morris, destroyed in 2002. LaSalle, satellite imagery shows that it was gone by 2003. Seneca, imploded into the river in 2010 with no advance warning given to local officials or the general public. It's best known for the news blooper that gained 9 million views on YouTube. Are you, Are you kidding, kidding me? me? Who did that? Spring Valley, lost to time in 2018. A mural of it in the downtown now serves as a memory rather than a symbol of local pride. Meridosia, extinct in 2018. Its modern replacement is not representative of the quaint rural setting it resides in. Utica, the bridge that I have cherished memories of, imploded in 2021. Northern Peoria, demolished this past July. And that is not all. The truss bridge in Henry is planned to be demolished in the coming years. Nearly all of these bridges were replaced, or will be replaced, with ugly, soulless steel girders devoid of any inspiration to mankind. Visitors to Starved Rock will now be greeted with an eyesore of steel and concrete, rather than an artistic beauty. The small towns along the Illinois River no longer have a monument of local pride, symbolism, and identity. Rather, they have a generic slab of concrete and steel that can be found anywhere. The same story, unfortunately, is playing out across the country. One of my bridge books shows a photo of a massive truss bridge crossing the Ohio River, connecting the towns of Marietta, Ohio, and Williamstown, West Virginia. When I first saw this photo, I became determined to research the bridge and eventually visit it, only to learn that the bridge was demolished in 1988. And although a truss bridge did replace it, the new bridge does not possess the structural beauty of the original. I visited western Pennsylvania several weeks ago. In one leg of my journey, I explored a small town called East Conema, which can be accessed by a plate girder bridge spanning the Little Conema River and Norfolk Southern Railroad tracks. Only later did I learn that a historic truss bridge built in 1921 used to exist here. Its name commemorating U.S. Marine Corps sergeant who was killed in the Battle of Iwo Jima during World War II. 
Although the Pennsylvania DOT was planning on preserving the historic bridge, a company called Brayman Construction lobbied the department to demolish it, claiming that replacing the bridge would cost taxpayers less money than it would to rehabilitate it. This argument was questioned by many preservationists, but in short, Brayman Construction won. The bridge was destroyed, and a generic slab of concrete and steel was put in its place, with the new bridge no longer bearing Michael Strang's name. During San Francisco's Loma Prieta earthquake of 1989, a deck collapsed on the eastern span of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, resulting in one death and raising concerns of a potential bridge collapse. Rather than retrofit the existing bridge, or at least construct a new truss bridge as a replacement that would have the same architectural beauty, the California DOT instead decided to construct a gigantic concrete pillar in the middle of the bay, screaming for attention. Although it is impressive, it does not display the same historic significance as its predecessor, which served as a remarkable feat of engineering in connecting San Francisco with Oakland. The new bridge is claimed to last 150 years, but given that the materials used to construct the bridge were almost entirely imported, I don't know how believable such a claim is. There's the truss bridge carrying I-70 over the Missouri River in Missouri. That's gone. The Woodpen Bridge in New Jersey. Gone. The Gerald Desmond Bridge in California. Gone. The Lake Champlain Bridge between Vermont and New York State. Gone. The countless trusses in rural communities that carry small, single-lane roads. Gone, 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 gone. I can spend hours listing the truss bridges that have been demolished in recent years, and many more are soon to follow, such as I-80 over the Des Plaines River in Illinois, I-5 over the Columbia River between Washington and Oregon, Route 181 over the Ship Channel in Corpus Christi, Texas, I-76 over the Beaver River in Pennsylvania, I-10 over the Calcajou River in Louisiana, the Black Hawk Bridge over the Mississippi River between Iowa and Wisconsin, U.S. Route 51 over the Ohio River between Illinois and Kentucky. It is never ending. State and local DOTs across the country are continuously destroying historic pieces of infrastructure and replacing them with ugly slabs of steel and concrete that lack the charm and inspiration that their predecessors have. So then why are DOTs demolishing truss bridges as well as not constructing new ones in the first place? Essentially, it comes down to cost and technological advancement. Let me explain. A century ago, before the advent of modern cable-state bridges and box girders, the materials and technology used at the time to build bridges were severely limited by constraints of maximum load and geometric design, meaning bridge spans could only be made so long with those materials. Building bridges in the form of trusses was a solution, as the assembly of truss members in a specific orientation allowed for the bridge load to be distributed among members, reducing the stress of the main bridge span experiences. Truss bridges were also relatively easy to design. Unlike many bridges built today, truss bridges required simple moment and share calculations and could easily be hand-drawn. For these reasons, truss bridges were often the only bridge type that could carry heavy traffic loads, especially over large crossings. Because of the large amount of steel used in truss bridges, however, they carried a large amount of weight and were costly to construct. But in the late 20th century, high-strength steel and concrete started being developed, which allowed for increased bridge load, longevity, and resistance to environmental conditions, all while using less building material and, in turn, being lighter and costing less money. Around the same time, CAD software began to be used in bridge design, which could calculate complex stresses and load distributions with far greater speed and precision than human engineers working by hand. Suddenly, truss bridges became an obsolete way to traverse crossings, while the construction of cable stayed, box girder, and plate girder bridges surged, shaping the architectural and structural design of bridges we see today. Truss bridges are not just costly to build, but also costly to maintain. The complex, interconnected members of a truss bridge require frequent inspections and upkeep. As modern plate girder and cable stayed bridges contain fewer members, the long-term cost to maintain these bridges is much cheaper. For this reason, state and local DOTs often choose to demolish and replace a truss bridge with a more modern bridge rather than rehabilitate it, even if rehabilitation were possible. Furthermore, infrastructure funds from federal and state governments are easier to obtain for a complete replacement and construction rather than for simple repairs and rehabilitation. Now, the use of government funds for creating new large-scale infrastructure projects rather than making mass rehabilitations of existing structures is a broken system that deserves its own video. But in essence, communities are given more state and federal grants to demolish and replace a bridge rather than to simply repair it, which is another reason that the demolition of truss bridges is preferred. 
In addition, historic truss bridges, as well as most bridges built more than a century ago, do not comply with the current bridge engineering standards laid out by organizations such as AASHTO, which require minimum lane width, minimum height clearance, and minimum load capacity, including loads from environmental conditions such as wind and snow. Although this argument can be used to decommission an older bridge due to safety concerns, it does not justify the needless demolition of these structures, especially since their replacements are usually constructed adjacent to the old bridge. Instead, these truss bridges should be left standing next to their replacements as a historic ruin, but apparently DOTs insist otherwise. I think that the dumbest excuse I've seen as to why truss bridges are being demolished and not being constructed anymore is because of changing tastes. In the eyes of DOTs, our society wants to see modern, minimalist buildings and infrastructure, and the detailed, ornate beauty of trusses has no place in this minimalist architectural world. Therefore, their demolition is justified under the logic that old equals ugly, to be replaced by futuristic structures advertised as being a testament to societal advancement. I do not have any patience for this argument, as this is the same excuse as to why traditional buildings are no longer constructed. Initially, I was going to tell the viewer to imagine if historic buildings across the United States were being demolished at the same rate as truss bridges and replaced with ugly boxes of glass and concrete praised by architects and government officials, emphasizing how this is essentially happening to truss bridges. Unfortunately, this analogy is exactly what happened to our historic buildings as well. Throughout the late 20th century and continuing into the 21st century, many Many historic buildings around the world have been demolished without any regard to historic significance, as these buildings were viewed as outdated and obsolete. Whether it was Pennsylvania Station in New York City or a small, mixed-use building along the main street of a rural town, no building was safe. They were often replaced with ugly boxes of glass and steel that were initially hailed as shiny futuristic architectural marvels showcasing the advancements in building design, but those general opinions quickly faded out. Just like truss bridges, traditional and classical buildings are considered impractical in today's society, deemed as too costly to build and maintain with their intricate details. Just like truss bridges, architects and government officials advocate against the construction of traditional buildings, claiming that architectural beauty is subjective and should be found through a personal lens. These arguments are used to justify the continued demolition of beautiful buildings and infrastructure to be replaced with soulless architecture which lacks historic significance. Moreover, a trend in architecture in the past several decades seems to be constructing minimalist boxes with only superficial ornamentation. Instead of genuine historic craftsmanship, these buildings are half-heartedly sprinkled with references to an era that architects insist is behind us. Take the Portland building in Portland, Oregon, a massive eyesore that is supposed to evoke references to classical architecture such as pilasters and garlands, but they're scaled and placed in such an awkward way that it all looks disorienting. The same can be said for truss bridges. The Washington Street Bridge in Boston was a historic swing bridge from 1900, which proudly displayed the city's industrial roots. However, it was demolished in 2020 to make way for something that looks like it came out of an episode of Black Mirror. Those white vertical pillars are supposed to evoke the beam members of the truss bridge that used to stand here, which doesn't make any sense. If you're going to reference trusses in your bridge design, then at that point just build a truss bridge. The point that I'm trying to make is that structural design, specifically of bridges, cannot be solely focused on the simplicity of a structure, especially when designers try to implement architectural features found in more traditional designs while trying to maintain that simplicity. Yes, these types of bridges are less expensive to construct. Yes, upkeep and maintenance are less challenging. Yes, it adheres to the concept of minimalism that architects are trying to shove down our throats. But is this truly what society wants? Utilitarianism is not what structural design is entirely about. Just like buildings, bridges should not be built solely for functionality. They need to have character to them. They need to be inspirational. They need to leave an impression on people who traverse or simply bypass them, so that they would be inclined to return to those bridges later to admire their beauty. If you're going to take a photo of one of these bridges, which one would you prefer to take? Overall, function and practicality should not be the only priorities when designing and building public infrastructure. Beauty, symbolism, and character matter as well. Structures like truss bridges offer these architectural virtues that their modern, cookie-cutter replacements often lack. These truss bridges were not built solely as crossings. They were built as landmarks that give a place meaning. And this is why we should once again start building our bridges and built environment as a whole, with aesthetics and authenticity in mind. 
So then, why did I discuss the decline of truss bridges as opposed to classical buildings, wooden roller coasters, or ocean liners? Well, it's because of the lack of awareness from the general public about the beauty that truss bridges hold. The Architectural Uprising, for example, is an international organization with more than 60,000 members, promoting the design of cities with traditional architecture. Although Architectural Uprising covers a wide range of structures, the movement mostly focuses on the beautification of buildings rather than infrastructure such as bridges. In comparison, the Historic Bridge Foundation is the largest advocacy group that specifically focuses on bridge preservation, especially of truss bridges. Although the membership size is not explicitly stated, its Facebook page has only 1,600 followers. Furthermore, the main website for the Historic Bridge Foundation has remained idle since 2023, which further hinders any campaign to preserve historic bridges. But if this video has made you gain an appreciation for these beautiful structures, and you hate seeing them destroyed as much as I do, I encourage you to take action preventing their continuous demolition by DOTs. A great place to start advocating for truss bridge awareness is the aforementioned Historic Bridge Foundation. By gaining enough followers, the Historic Bridge Foundation could be pulled out of its idled state so that they can continue fighting against the loss of historic bridges across the country. If you want to amplify your voice even more, reach out to state and local officials to tell them that we are tired of watching our cultural landmarks be dismissed as expendable pieces of infrastructure slated for demolition, which should instead be preserved as historic landmarks. Finally, I encourage you to go onto social media and type hashtag save the trusses. Use this tag for any posts you make that include photos or stories of truss bridges and share it with as many of your friends or followers as you can. With your support, we can stop the needless demolition of our historic infrastructure so that the architecture can be enjoyed for future generations. I'm the Southland Urbanist. I'll see you next time.